A California congressman is continuing to demand that the State Department take action against Ethiopia and Eritrea for allegedly committing genocide by blocking food aid convoys to Ethiopia's Tigray region. KPFA's Ann Garrison reports from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. In a congressional hearing earlier this week, California Congressman Brad Sherman called once again for a, quote, legal designation, unquote, that both Ethiopia and Eritrea are committing genocide in Ethiopia's Tigray region by blocking food aid convoys so as to justify the use of U.S. military force. I've suggested ways to pressure the Ethiopian and especially particularly the Eritrean government, which has, of course, the ports that could be used, particularly by interrupting sea traffic uh, going, you know, even hundreds of miles away from Eritrea. And I think a determination of genocide would spur our administration to do more than simply send harsh letters to Addis Ababa and Asmara. Sherman argues that the administration should deploy the U.S. Navy to block access to Eritrean ports Asab and Masawa, even though that would be an act of war in violation of international law. Only the administration can use the U.S. Navy to put additional pressure on the two countries involved. This week, New Zealand journalist Alistair Thompson and I both returned from Ethiopia's Afar region, where we saw aid convoys traveling on the Djibouti-Ethiopia highway to Mikele, the capital of Tigray. In Samara, I spoke to Kenyan convoy drivers returning from Mikele, who said that they had traveled unhindered from Nairobi to Addis Ababa and then to Mikele to deliver aid for the International Committee of the Red Cross. I asked Alistair Thompson to describe aid convoys he saw while traveling north to Abala a town on Afar region's border with Tigray region. I travelled north on Saturday the 14th of May to Abala, which is on the border with Tigray, as you point out, and where there has been significant amounts of conflict. And on the way, I saw a large number of trucks driving up. We passed them, they were travelling more slowly. And on the following day, when we returned, we saw more trucks travelling up, and we also saw a large convoy staged at Silsa about maybe 100 kilometers from Samara that was about to depart from Mikele. And did you see any sign that the convoys were being hindered? None whatsoever. After the convoys depart from Sosa, the security is fairly simple. There are a series of checkpoints, not that many of them, at different intervals along the road, manned by the Afar. There's no sign of the Ethiopian army in the area, and there seems to be a very orderly running of the convoys. And my understanding is that there's been a very well, the past couple of weeks, there's been a lot more convoys than there's been in the past. Are there scanners? Yeah, so there are scanners outside Samara at a place called Sado, where all the trucks have to go through, and the large scanners that the trucks drive through, and they're capable of identifying electronic devices and metal and so forth, contraband. All the trucks have to pass through that before they reach Silsa in the staging point and they are guarded and guarded from there and then they depart for McKelly. So Brad Sherman's claim that the trucks are being stopped from traveling on to McKelly seems unfounded to you. It's completely unfounded in terms of the current situation. The, to the extent that there have been blockages this year, they were caused entirely by the TPLF's invasion and occupation of the northern region. That was New Zealand journalist Alistair Thompson, founder of Scoop New Zealand. In Addis Ababa, for Pacifica, KPFA Radio, I'm Ann Garrison.